Hello and welcome to this edition of Photography Talk. I'm Greg Claycorn. I'm here with my buddies, Ken Nelson and Mark Skinner. We are graduates of Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York in the Fine Art Photography Program. And uh, we have had years of experience in uh, professional and uh, professional commercial and professional fine art photography. And uh, we get together. We like not as often as we like, but we get together and we talk about photography and we invite you to uh, join the conversation. If you'd like to subscribe, just hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so that you can uh, be notified when uh, we post a new episode. Now, uh, today's episode is uh, mine and I'm going to be talking about uh, photography's language. And uh, for me, this has been like a recurring uh, topic for me or vein of topic for me, because I, I believe that uh, photography, like most visual uh, art forms, and yes, I do believe photography is an art form when done a certain way, uh, is about, um, you know, connecting with the heart. You know, it, it's, if it uh, connects emotionally with the viewer, then I believe that, um, not so much the particulars of it, what it's saying visually, but the connection between the eye and the mind and the heart is important. And um, I've heard several artists uh, say how uh, the best art is, you know, elicits a, an emotional response. And um, that's gonna be my uh, subject today. Do you guys have any input on that or can we start that? I would I would say you are correct that eliciting an emotional response is one of the most important aspects of a great book. Okay, or painting, or you know, mixed media, or sculpture. Yeah, sure. Ken, nothing. No, go ahead. All right. Okay, so we're gonna just uh, march right along now. Uh, when I go back to New York, uh, it's always. It's always special time for me. Um, grew up there in good old Brooklyn, but this is uh, uh, Brooklyn Prospect Park is is you know designed by the same designers that did Central Park. So we, Brooklyn didn't get a bow bridge, unfortunately. But <laughs> um, there's a bunch of them. Anyway, uh, I just get a kick out of uh, just walking around Central Park. Um, different times of day, it's always, always slightly magical, you know, the uh, English castle and uh, Belvedere Castle, right? Is that the name of it, Belvedere? Being in the, in the slight center just off the left? No, no, up there uh, by the reservoir. It, yes, that is Belvedere Castle, but that building okay. on the horizon is the El Dorado apartment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's no, that's is, that's the Dakota, isn't it? No, it's the El Dorado. Those two, El Dorado those two. with the twin, the twin towers there. So it's peace. Yes. Okay. Yep. I was that that the building was also featured in the uh, uh, the original Ghostbusters, like Bill Mary and Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, Ooh, that's a look. Uh, <laughs> what, what's that? Uh, Rick Morena says, "Okay, who brought the dog?" Yeah, who brought the dog? Yeah, that's a good one. Anyway, um, I, I wanted to, you know, just beyond just uh, the visual statement of, you know, a picturesque or a scenic, um, a scenic, uh, what would you even call it? A, a scenic image where you have water and people strolling in the late afternoon, the shadows and the reflections. So What's that, Mark? Very, it's a very nice landscape. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's there's something about um, you know when you talk about the language of photography or the photo photography's language, you know it, it one of the uh, one of the the best things about photography is that it it uh, it captures a reality, you know, and uh, and it in, in in such detail that it allows the viewer to you know, enter into the image and just, you know, take a walk around it almost as if you were actually there, you know, and it does, um, you know, a lot of, <laughs> I I remember getting, um, you know, having a lover's walk on, on the Bow Bridge and 
uh, stealing kisses and you know, having a, an emotionally good time in that part of uh, in part of New York. You know, and you, you think of New York, it's all tall buildings and glass and steel. But you know, in in, uh, in the midst of that is this this uh, Central Park where you can really be out of the city and in like a, a natural surrounding, and um, you know, get away from the city for for some brief moments. Um, and that's that's the language of photography, or that's photography's language for me. That's the experience that I have with uh, Central Park. All right. Or also, uh, I mean, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you talk about the emotional response. I mean, I think in this particular image, uh, there's a particular time of day. Yeah, I think it was late afternoon because we had the uh, good light on the uh, bow bridge and the, the shadow on the walkway on the left there. Go right. ahead. So there are elements, and you've got the reflection. The bridge is prominently uh, illustrated, as is the walkway, the pat walk path on the left side, but the dappled light adds a lot to it. So, I mean, how do you, using your sense of visual language, how do you see this in its final form? Do you see this uh, as uh, an image that remains a uh, picturing device, or do you see it uh, in any other format as it's? In a what device? I missed you dropped out there. In whatever you use to capture capture this. Uh, Basically, the technical to, part of it. Just stay in the camera. I guess my question is: Is the shot to stay in the camera? Or are you going to post this online, or is it to uh, be right. printed somewhere? Yes, and or all does that matter? Above. Yes, it right. matters. I, I, uh, I mean, because looking at it you know, on a handheld device or uh, your laptop or screen desktop does not do this image any justice. I want to print these. I've always wanted to print big, you know, 50 inches or, or better or better. <laughs> because um, like, like, like I shot the panoramic image of it to allow the eye to really wander into it. I, I went super wide so that um, I don't know when I when I look at an image, I like to be in in just surrounded by it. You know, I can go into it and I see all the the walkway. I can see myself there. I can see myself on a little uh, rowboat. I've done that. You know, with <laughs> with with some white wine and grapes and an umbrella and you know, really good company. She was well. Anyway, that's another story. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's there's some romance to it, and and it it just allows the the mind's eye to to go through it, and I I uh, I, I just get a the the language of this is 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 emotional for me because it, it there I've been in that park so many times and done so many things there. I mean, I remember oh my gosh, one of the best summers where when um, uh, Simon and Garfunkel did their concert. <laughs> in Sheep Meadow at the at the bandstand up there. And it was just unreal. You know, I mean, it, it, we got there early just because we knew it was going to be a popular uh, concert. We had no idea how popular because like at about five o'clock quitting time, New York City descended on that park. And the scent of weed was everywhere. <laughs> And the concert, of course, you know, Simon Garfunkel are, are New York and it it, uh, it was a New York concert and it was really, really good. And that background and that setting, you know, all of these things are, um, you know, my in my mind's eye, I'm back there again at that concert. And it, it's, it's, uh, it, this image is emotional, though. It's a, it holds a lot of um, memories, good memories and uh, you know, some sad, but uh, there, there's a lot in this image for me. That's why I wanted to capture the, you know, with the language that photography is has its strength with all the detail, you know, that you could be on the walk, be on the water, walking up the uh, the west side um, of the park on Central Park West. And, uh, yeah. Actually, I I think this is taken from the east side view. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think it's on the no, east no, side. No, no, I'm view looking. Most... It's from the east side, looking west. Look, west side, yes. 
North and West. Yeah. Anything, Ken? You got? No. No. Go ahead. All right. All right. Um, okay. Moving right along. Let's see what else is what else I added in there. Um, yeah. Again, language of photography. You know, you. you <laughs> it, it, it this because I'm, I'm you know uh, it uh, I <laughs> this makes me think of uh, when <laughs> when this city was a horse drawn city and just uh, having thousands and thousands of horses and how badly it must have really smelled <laughs> but um, there's a nostalgia to the horse and carriages that they they still have you know in Central Park. And I wanted to uh, capture a slice of that, but um, then then uh, you know the language again, you know color is is has come a long way, and the digital color has uh, also come come a long way, and um, just the things that you can do it that I did. This is an HDR image where I have, you know, saturated the colors and sharpened it and really really made this a. Uh, um, for me, a, a more detailed, more involved um, experience. You know, the sound of the horse, ho a shoed horse, you know, along the pavement, and and the, the crunching of the wheels on the on the concrete. You know, there's there's a certain feel to that, a certain experience to that that uh, that makes it an emotional, visual, emotional experience for me because of, of all the other things that it triggers. Uh, you guys have anything? No? If not, I'll go on. Well, uh, you know, expensive sounding like a, a, an old fashioned critique. I really like how the line of the leg of the horse leads right into the body of the horse and then the head of the horse and then the branch that's on the far right side. You know, it's a nice. Nice bit of uh, symmetry. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it well, really does remind. It, I mean, it looks like it looks like an automotive automotive ad. I mean, I think if I if I'd seen this photograph in black and white, I'd be a little shocked by their attire. But uh, other than that, it <laughs> reminds me, you know, like an ad for a carriage. You know, like this is, hmm. you know, this is the new model for, uh, you know. 1895. Ford the Ford 50, right? The Ford 50, not the 150. It's the Ford 50. Yes. Well, yeah, all one horsepower. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and the things that, you know, because it, it touches people in different ways. That's just one reason, um, you know, speaking of the photography's language, um, not to impose, you know, I have nothing against title, titles of, you know, people putting a title to their work but um i like to leave my images untitled so that people can see what what they want to see in it or what what experiences um what experiences they have and that are evoked by by the uh image that they're looking at that that's uh when i do have a show i do uh one of my favorite things is to to go around and ask people what they see in the image because nine times out of 10, it's not what I saw when I shot it. And that 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 opens up a whole nother world to me. And I think that's an important part of um, photography's language because it can speak across, you know, across dialects, across, you know, language barriers, if you're French, if you're Spanish, if you're, a uh, Kenyan, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it speaks to the viewer through their experience. And that's one of the things I like about photography the most. Um, but moving right along, you can pop the next one up there and it changes, you know, when you when you do black and white. And um, I find when you, you, when you get a good uh, balance in your color uh, image, when you, um, you know, go through different processes to make it a black and white image uh, or grayscale, whatever. Um, it usually renders a similar level of, uh, you know, Ansel Adams, you know, zone system from white to your, your darkest black, you know. And um, 
but uh, when you remove color from images, you know, I'm, I'm really starting to get back into uh, the, the, the joy of, um, of uh, how black and white communicates because it, it, uh, it uh, takes, you know, it could be a completely modern image, but when you take the color out of it, it has this tendency to, um, I won't say age it, but it does take it into a different visual artistic time frame for me. Um, and I just enjoy the, the black and white, the way black and white moves on a page, the way the eye travels around a black and white image. And um, I remember showing someone uh, two, two images and one in color. And then when they saw the black and white one, you know, it was like, oh, I love black and white. And I was like, well, why? And she's like, well, it, it's, uh, they, they, they could never really give me a really good answer why. But there's just something about a black and white image that um, I don't know whether, you know, because people are so used to seeing everything in color. Um, that uh, black and white is just like an alternative world or something like that. I'm not sure. You guys have anything on that? No, no, I think uh, I kind of alluded to that earlier. And you, you kind of held the same feeling about that photo that it would be a good vintage image. Yeah, okay. There's just there's one word that people associate, or at least that over the years I've heard associated with black and white imagery, and it's the one word is timeless which in and of itself is vague, um, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so it's kind of weird, but I guess the generalization is that we don't, we can't date a black and white photograph. You can't tell when it was shot, but that actually isn't true either. Um, but I guess the, the sense is that, yeah, they figure it's timeless. And I guess humans being the way they are in terms of how we communicate uh, and the vagueness with which we communicate, I guess that's the most accurate they can get and, the, and again, uh, historically over the years, um, the one word that typically typifies everyone else's description of a black and white photograph is the word timeless. Okay. So, yeah, I, I understand that. And I understand um, what you're saying. I mean, having, you know, studied photography, you know, just um, and having not, not even the art speak because um, art speak is if it's grounded in, you know, art history and knowing where imagery came from and how it went from, you know, sepia, the glass plates to selenium tones and then, you know, adding martial oils, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, um, <laughs> you know, being a photography student, you know, you know, timeless doesn't really, really kind of fit, <laughs> but because we know the timeline of it. so. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, on, no, it makes it no less fun and or, or interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, based on the attire of the, in, of the individuals in this particular photograph, I would say it's anywhere after, say, 1973, you know, oh, maybe right. the 60s, but that would be, I mean, he would be a very special handsome cab driver to, to wear jeans and a t-shirt in the 60s maybe in the 70s he might be a little bit more close but th that occupation probably didn't tolerate that casual and attire either back then but right. you know people tended to dress in t-shirts and, and and jeans from the sort of the 70s forward so i you know i would say last half century to now any time between then was is good i don't I can't tell if anyone has a cell phone in their hand, so I can't bring it to the last 15 years, but I would say certainly the last half century. Right, right. Although you look, well, you know, a photography student would look for the, you know, the minutia that would date the image, you know, where he's like, oh, that could be. Well, that's part of being visually savvy, right? That, right? Is yeah, that part yeah. of being visually savvy? Is, is visually understanding, savvy. understanding it, what, you're seeing in a photograph right right absolutely absolutely um and then you know to, to turn a critical eye on it instead of just saying oh it's a it's a old timey picture because it's black and white but there would be other you know if i had you know done like you know my cindy sherman the, you know and uh dressed the people and set the set the image then i could um you know challenge you to figure out you know 
when uh, when this was shot, you know. Well, to be, to be an effective Cindy Sherman uh, copy, you'd have to be in the photo yourself. Eh, yeah, that could be. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go on. Let's keep, keep it moving. Um, you know, okay. I mean, I'll just, I'll let you guys sit with this for a second and you tell me what you see. Well, I see a really nifty bay. Uh, with craggy shore. It's very uh, beautiful as it is, uh, a little frightening, but I'm really, really disturbed by the horizon line of the ocean in this particular image. Go ahead. What about it? I, I'm just, the horizon line uh, is not what I am expecting, so I'm a little disturbed by it. I, I've grown to uh, associate the horizon line, even though it should be curved. I associate it with a flat line based on the field of view that I'm accustomed to seeing in, in a photograph. Uh, uh -huh. Go ahead. <laughs> That's it. That's all I okay. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, they're the whole. Go ahead. Uh, you got anything, Ken, or can I address that? No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, all I see is a wonderfully wonderful sunset. So, okay, no, no, I do. Um, there's like a, a little trick. I because I, I'll do some of the um, panoramas on a uh, on a tripod so that to keep the horizon flat. But I also, you know, with with a couple of other shots, I noticed that if you adjust up or you know shift the camera while you're panning it distorts the horizon line, you know? And um, this, the image was disturbing for me because yeah, it was craggy. You know, if this was blown up so you could really see, you know, the, the surface, this is the all of this, it's the craziest thing. This is like right. a coral, uh, were you saying something, Mark? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I thought you could hear my, my phone ringing. Oh, no. Oh, thought you somebody was ringing the bell for service um, <laughs> um yeah this is like this is like a coral shore and uh the locals can walk barefoot on it but if for, for uh, me <laughs> on my you know with soft soft soles of my feet they'd have been torn up in this so this this whole area was kind of craggy and uh dangerous yeah so i i i felt it was kind of appropriate to use, you know, the language of photography or a photography's language that says, you know, visual horizon lines are flat. And then what it would be it like to to change that language and say something different with it, you know, in a in an idyllic setting, you know, like the sunset or maybe a sunrise that uh, that um, it can be intentionally um, skewed or um, what is that word? Oh my gosh, it's escaping me. Intentionally manipulated so that it's uh, not as you would expect it to be in a photograph. You know, it's, it's the unexpected in, um, you know, what you would consider a normal seen so yeah yeah i mean there's there's things that you can capture and just let it be or there's there's always what i get a kick out of is you know what what is the photographer's um uh how is the photographer's hand in some of the images you know i mean there's there's a whole language of shooting everything it has to be super sharp it has to be exactly what you capture it has to be color corrected and balanced so that it looks exactly like you know how the color was or if it's black and white it should have the range of tonality but uh, sometimes that's okay but you know sometimes it's it's uh, fun to throw a curve in there and it says you know well what about this so yeah yeah i'm i'm glad you uh pointed that out mark that was a very 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 good anything else guys <laughs> no i don't have anything else Okay. Was was there more? Do I have any more, Ken, or is that the last one? That's the last one. Good. Good. Well, that uh, is where I wanted to go with um, uh, what I hope to be uh, part one of uh, photography's language. 
there's so much and so it's such a rich topic for me that um, I want to explore that. And, uh, you know, once I get settled, I'm in the middle of a move right now, but uh, once I get settled, I want, I would like to have a show. And um, it's one thing to, to, uh, to um, show stuff on, like I said, on a little screen, but, but photography for me belongs on a wall, you know, where people can step up and take a look at that that that's what that spins my wheel so <sighs> photography's language visual savvy you know um that's where i am today you guys got anything okay i think mark's got something where is mark mark do you want to run you take it and run man mm. congratulations to kansas city for winning the super bowl that's a good game Eagles, oof, they put up a fight. That was a good game. Did we lose Mark? I yes, I think oh, we Mark lost. Skinner left. He might be yeah, coming back. Yeah, we lost him. Uh, let's give him a few seconds to see if he comes back. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, oh, man, it, well, can, yeah, can you talk to me? Because you you have some really, really, oh, my God, I, I, I could still buy a couple more of the prints from you. You get this creamy texture when you do um, the architecture around New York in black and white. It just pops off the page, man. What, what is it? What is it that? What is your attraction to uh, your visual language? Oh, actually, it's changed over the years, and I think it's when we think about when I think about the technical term visual language or photography's language. I tend to think of multiple dialects and multiple languages. So there's an infinite amount of dialects within an infinite amount of languages. And uh, I think there is a certain set of universal standards uh, that are within uh, photography's language. Uh, and that, and that, that's what I think transcends uh, uh, just the, the, the visual language in itself. So what I'll do is I'll just share uh, an image of mine uh, which is the the ability to of uh, photography's language to uh, emote and to help emote, and um, whether that is in terms, I, I guess if you have humans within a frame, it can emote better than just a landscape or a still life, uh, because there's the relationship to to the human within the photograph. Um, but I, I, of course, I think whatever a human is doing within the photograph uh, also adds to that language. And so uh, this is uh, my contribution to uh, the visual language, which is uh, emotion, like like you said, it's the transit. It, but what which emotion in particular, right? Joy, and sadness, joy, excitement, yeah. right? Uh, euphoria. Coney Allen House series, yeah. This is part of that, yeah. And um, and 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 human relationships, you know. So um, that that th I just love the ability to do that and to show that. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, uh, some would say that uh, moving pictures does it better, but I, I tend to believe that uh, photography does it quite well. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll just share. There's I think another photograph with you, which is uh, of the same project, but just uh, an individual, you know, which is different mm -hmm. than a, than a couple. So. Uh, it, it just sort of goes to show you that uh, you can sort of uh, get a get a get the emotion from just an individual. You don't necessarily have to have two people in the photograph or at all to to uh, evoke emotion. Uh, and if you are empathetic or sympathetic to uh, your fellow human, then you will uh, ultimately be able to look at another human and understand what they're going through. Uh, so, and if you have a hard time understand what this person is going through, I, I find it odd that you've not gone through this similar situation. So, uh, that that's where I'm at with this. Just uh, the love of photography. Okay, cool. Um, mm -hmm. You sound a little like the um, the chipmunks. So, well, I guess we could wrap it up here. What do you think, Ken? No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then that's going to be it for this episode. I'm Greg Flaghorn. That's my buddy Ken Nelson up there. And uh, Mark Skinner was with us. And we are having our uh, ongoing photography talk here. 
Uh, we're three plat Brad grads, and uh, we talk photography, fine art photography, commercial photography. And uh, I guess that'll wrap it up for this episode. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can be notified when we, another episode is online. Thanks for viewing. Thanks for joining us. And uh, tell us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great time.